I bring warm greetings in the preeminent name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's Ryan here. Happy anniversary! It's our fortieth mnemonic in internal medicine. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you guys are enjoying this content as much as I'm enjoying bringing it to you. Haha! <laughs> Today we're talking about a simple ICU checklist, a mental checklist for issues to attend to in critical care, and the mnemonic is fast hugs bid. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to my beautiful wife who pointed out that the reason that my board was so kind of dirty in previous videos is because I hadn't removed the plastic, so I was writing on top of the plastic. So the reason why this board is nice and clean is because I've taken out the plastic. So a quick scripture, guys. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, uh, Jesus says here, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and him with me. You see, the reason God created man was so that he could have fellowship with man. And I pray that that will be the burning desire of our hearts, to seek God, to know him more and more with each passing day. Since we're talking about hugs, I thought I could favor you with a few jokes. I see now that not being hugged enough as a child was simply preparing me for social distancing. <laughs> and what do you call a snuggly rabbit? A hugs bunny. <laughs> okay, guys, so the mnemonic here is fast hugs but so in the critical care in the icu we need to attend to each of these issues for our patients in critical care okay so first up is feeding by nasogastric feeds and this you want to do as soon as possible because this promotes a healthy gut mucosal barrier which prevents translocation of uh, bugs from the bowel into the bloodstream it also makes provision for calories for our critically care um, for our critical patient who most of the time is sedated and cannot eat, all right? And then, of course, the second issue to, to tend to is analgesia. So we have a lot of options. For instance, we can use fentanyl, 50 to 100 micrograms every five minutes, and we need to load that IV to effect, and then one to four mics per kg per hour by continuous IV infusion. And the typical infusion range for that is 50 to 300 mics per hour. It's very potent, okay? And it's used mainly in patients with hemodynamic instability. It has rapid onset, short duration, but it's highly lipophilic, right? The other option is morphine, 0.05 milligram per kg, IV loading dose and then 4 to 15 milligram per hour but beware morphine may cause hypotension due to histamine release the other option is hydromorphone all right sedation as well very important in the ICU and to this end we can use propofol uh, 0 0.5 milligram per kg per hour initial infusion and titrate to 0 0.5 to 3 milligram per kg per hour by continuous IV infusion but the typical infusion range there is 0 to 300 milligram per hour that's appropriate for short-term sedation, we need to monitor, however, for acidosis and increased creatinine kinase with prolonged use. But what we often use locally is midazolam, uh, 0.03 milligram per kg loading, and then 0.02 to 0.1 milligram per kg hour per hour IV infusion. And typical infusion range is not to 10 milligram per hour. We can also use lorazepam as well. All right, thromboprophylaxis. Usually we use inoxaparin sodium, which is also known as clexane, 0 0.5 milligram per kg subcutaneously. Uh, but of course, you must be aware of the um, kind of side effects of clexane, most especially HIT, which is uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia. Right, um, and we've got to put our patients in thromboprophylaxis because they are at risk for DVTs and pulmonary emboli simply because they're immobilized and of course because of the primary pathology. Some of them may have malignancy on board, some of them may have thrombophilia, some of them may have a tendency to clot formation on the basis of autoimmune disease and things like um, antibody phospholipid syndrome and so forth. Right, so next up is H for head up position. So we need to always position our patients 30 degrees head up to prevent aspiration of gastric content. And this has been proven in many studies. Uh, also prophylaxis, very important as well. Um, risk factors for uh, gastrointestinal stress oscillation includes mechanical ventilation and coagulopathy. And we usually use prophylaxis. You can use H2 blockers or you can use your proton pump inhibitors. But remember that PPIs are associated with a risk of ventilator associated pneumonia, VAPS. So watch out for that. G is for glucose control. Usually we use the insulin infusion for that. Remember S for spontaneous breathing trials when our patient's pathology is being treated and uh, you think that they are ready for uh, liberation from the ventilator. Do your spontaneous breathing trials, right? Okay, B is for bowel care. 
eyes in between in catheter removal to promote mobilization. And the moment, the, remember that the longer that a catheter stays in situ, the greater the chance for urinary tract infection and sepsis. And then lastly, de-escalation of antibiotics is very important, not just in the ICU, but also as part of general antibiotic stewardship. All right, so guys, a mental checklist for critical care patients in the ICU, fast hugs, bid. There you go. God bless you, and I hope this is helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.